That way for me. <laughs> Look at the person on your left. <laughs> Have you caught sight of who's behind you yet? Yes. Or, <laughs> or in front? <laughs> we are the people of God. We are not the only gathering of God's people today, for there are gatherings already going home, having had their morning worship. And some are only waking, looking forward to it. But we are a people of God, and he is here for us. To listen to our praise and worship. To hear what we pray for. To listen and to bless, to challenge and to comfort. For we are not just a people, we are the children of a loving God. Our opening hymn this morning, just as a father shows his love. Together, uh, we feel like we belong through Jesus. Let's pray. Lord God, how time passes. It flashes past. Weeks of school holidays begin to tick their way through. Three weeks into July, halfway through. The years flash past. We see our grandchildren grow, hurrying through childhood. We see our family growing older and are surprised when we look in the mirror and discover that we have two. We know that history turns, it seems, ever more quickly. But you are always and will always be a God of strength and might. Your arm is always strong to save. You are always ready to hear us. A whispered prayer, 
or a called out cry. Father, you are the eternal God, the same yesterday, today and forever. Lend us a little of that brand new spark that we may tell you how we love you and sing it like the moment we first came to faith and knew that we believed. May that spark give us the excitement of faith to remember your Son came to seek, to find and to save each one of us. And in the name of your Son Jesus, we gather together again. Besides the friends whom we have gathered in worship with over decades, and besides those whom we sit more closely with, now that so much has changed on Sundays, and we offer a welcome to those who are new, for they belong to you too, and that familiarity means something is new, but still connected to the Ancient of Days and the God of boundless tomorrows. Help us be open to the work of your Spirit, that we may sing with pleasure and welcome those on our right and left, in front and behind of us. For together we become more than any one prayer or one song. Here, God's people gather to tell the world all this matters. Amen. John, will you come forward to read our gospel for us this morning? Morning. morning. Uh, our reading this morning is from Mark chapter 7, verses 24 to 37. Jesus honours a Syrophoenician woman's faith. Jesus left that place and went to the vicinity of Tyre. He entered the house and did not want anyone to know it, yet he could, not, he could not keep his presence secret. In fact, as soon as she heard about him, a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an impure spirit came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek born in Syrian Phoenicia. She begged Jesus to drive the demon out of her daughter. First, let the children eat all they want, he told her, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Lord, she replied, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he told her, for such a reply you may go, the demon has left your daughter. She went home and found her child lying on the bed and the demon gone. Jesus heals a deaf and mute man. Then Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went through Sidon down to the Sea of Galilee and into the region of the Decapolis. There some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk, and they begged Jesus to place his hand on him. After he took him aside, away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears. Then he spat and touched the man's tongue. He looked up to heaven and with a deep sigh said to him, Ephatha, which means be opened. At this the man's ears were opened. His tongue was loosed and he began to speak plainly. Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone, but the more he did so, the more they kept talking about it. People were overwhelmed with amazement 
He has done everything well, they said. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. Amen. May God add his blessings to the reading of his words. Thank you, John. At the beginning of May, the whispers that nobody really wanted to give full voice to said, I don't know who will come to the village hall. That's what I was hearing and there was, there was fearfulness about it. Look, nobody expected this, the strong attendance of so many members. And I have to say, that's your doing, because you have talked about what you have experienced and others believed you and came and found, yeah, it works. It's not the same as being in a church, I know that, but it works. We praise God and we do it together. Well done. Look what your message did. In a moment, I'll tell you a little bit more about the invitation you've received, but we're going to sing first a song I heard the sound, I hear the sound of rustling. It's a song about mission and a song about the Holy Spirit, that wind of God, that breath that moves unseen, going ahead of God's people to do the job of telling one another. I can sing it quite loudly. So you can hide behind me if you're not so familiar with it. But we'll just give it a go. Thanks, Elf. Thank you. 
You wouldn't believe the ambition I had. One was to be an author. Well, I haven't got a book to my name yet, so fair enough. The other was to be an orchestral conductor. <laughs> I've had one lesson on the chanter. Nothing on the violin, the piano, or anything else. <laughs> nonetheless, nonetheless, I'm a choir master for a moment there. Yep, we just need to slow down. If it's unfamiliar, I will try and lead. If not by the hands, I will try and lead by how clearly you can see me starting uh, to sing a line. And I usually get it right. So if you're a wee bit unfamiliar, cast an eye towards me. And I might not wave my hands, but you'll see my lips and my mouth move. <laughs> and my breath before I start. So you did really well there. Well done. So our intonations this morning include the Holiday Club. Are you a granny with children to look after between the ages of, well, from nothing to 11? This, the activities are really aimed at children 4 to 11. If it's a babe in arms, they can come and mum or dad or granny or, or grandpas can keep them busy, keep them comfortable. Pass the word on to a neighbour as well. We're glad to see them Tuesdays and Thursdays from 11 till 1 o'clock. We do crafts, we do games, we do dancing, we do lunch. Uh, I became a fair hand at the, the cha-cha slide last week. <laughs> I'm not going to show you though. <laughs> so, you've got your invitation in lying on your seat or in your hand already. The leadership team, the Presbytery, having designated us here a local mission church, uh, one of our first missions is going to be to people you know. People who are members of the church but haven't come yet or have tried it once and you haven't seen them again. That's an invitation for them. It might be to a neighbour. It might be to a friend that you think, do you know, they would like it if they came. They've asked and talked and heard about it over the years. Just tell them, the minister said I was to give you this. If you're a wee bit scared of it, say, I would like you to come with me. You can tell them Gregor wants to see them. Just to get introduced and make them welcome. And you know, we could put out more chairs. So on the 1st of September, we'll have a service full of hymns that we know. We won't be learning or practicing a hymn like the last one. We'll have hymns that are familiar. And we'll have some fun together. And it will be a service. And then it's going to be, as you'll have read in the smaller print, an early lunch, a barbecue lunch. Now we're already doing well. We'll have tea and coffee for them coming in. And a welcome to give. And a lunch to stay on for. And I'll rush away to Faithley. And then I'll rush back to meet folks. But you'll be here. And you'll be staying. Because your friends, your neighbours, your family will be here. Or you'll just make yourself known to those who come. So the job, please, pass this to somebody well before the 1st of September. And let them know we'll be glad to see them. It's as easy as that. Some people will be waiting for the invite. Because our God will have been working in their heart. And that will be the only excuse they need to say, do you know what? It's about time. It's amazing what happens when you make an invite. Invites can be declined. I will not be offended if you tell me stories of people saying, no thanks. It's an invite. But there will be people who will say, okay, I'll come. I'll give it a try. That could be yours. But you'll have to let them know. So that's what it's for. If you can use another postcard, there's sitting down with, on my satchel just now, and they'll be here next week. So you can, you can have a go with a second friend or neighbour and let them know. First of September is the day we're inviting them to your job. I've done the printing, uh, and I'll make sure the service is bright and cheerful and welcoming, and you can do your part too. That's all it takes. And we'll see what happens. So, our next, next intonation. 
Walk and Talk is happening. Some folks here have been at it. Uh, so if you want to find out more, ask who's gone to Walk and Talk. Then we've got the men's group continues to meet on a Wednesday. If you know a man who needs a bit of company uh, and a bit of encouragement from that, we meet in the church every Wednesday at 11 a.m. and we either go locally or further afield. Stitches happens uh, on Tuesday afternoons and that's it. <laughs> okay, well, I'll put my invitation in my pocket and we will sing together. We've got the Stuart Fountain yes. already. The Guild are going to have a pop-up choir. And they're going to sing the following song at it. So I thought we should include it. Just so at the next Guild meeting, uh, the Guild rally, it's, it's the, the get-together. Rossi? No. No. Which one? The National. The National one. If you're going to the National one, then you'll want to know this song if you get there. So I don't know who's going, to be honest. But it's a perfectly good song. It's a very popular song throughout the UK. So it's a new way of singing the Lord's My Shepherd. It introduces a chorus, which is just a new way to sing it. So you're doing awful well with new songs. How would you like to be at the forefront of him singing in the UK today? <laughs> it's the 23rd Psalm. A very good morning to you all. Uh, I want to thank God this morning for allowing us again to come and worship Him. Our text this morning we read about two stories. Two stories. The Syrophoenician woman, and the next is about um, someone who was deaf and could also speak, and Jesus healed him. So these, these are two stories. And for some reason, I think people focus on the Syrophoenician woman because, because they think Jesus was very good to this woman. I don't want to go into that. I want to focus on the woman and the other story. That these two stories, they all speak about, in my view, they speak about one thing. There is one thing that these stories are speaking about, the faith of others. That, brought, that came to Jesus. So the first one is about the Syrophoenician woman who has got a daughter who is not feeling well. But before we go there, we've got Jesus moving from a region. Because last week we were talking about Jesus uh, walking on the water. So we go to chapter, when we start chapter 7, we see Jesus He's speaking about the Pharisees. They are arguing about something and cleanliness. And he's saying, uh, asking Jesus, why are the disciples eating without washing their hands? So Jesus was arguing with these guys. So he goes. So from chapter 24, we hear that, verse 24 of chapter 7, we hear that Jesus went to a region in Tyre. So Tyre was a region where basically these people did not believe in God. They were not Jews. So in this region, people in Tyre, they were not Jews. So Jesus went there. And we have read that Jesus wanted to be away from the people. He did not want to be seen. He wanted to take a moment for himself and his, and his disciples and be there. Quiet moment. But some people heard, people in Tyre heard that Jesus was there. So this woman said, okay, now Jesus is here, let me go. I want to speak about the faith of this woman. Because she had so many obstacles to overcome to go to Jesus. Firstly, because she's not, she's not a Jew. So she, she had to overcome that fear. What will my friends say? Because obviously in this region, they had heard about Jesus and they were just, they were just doing stories going around. And her, being a Greek, she had to decide that, you know what, I have tried everything for my child, but I just have to go and see this man. So that was great faith 
to overcome to, I just have to go and see this man. So she decides to go. She, and again, we must understand that the culture did not allow women to be in contact with men. So we, they could not just go in the garden of men. So again, she had to overcome that because, you know what, she had already gone through so much because the child was not well. So she goes, she goes to Jesus, says, Jesus, can you hear my prayer? And Jesus, for some reason, you know, I, I've struggled with this, you know, for some reason, you know, Jesus says, no, you know what, we can't give bread to dogs. So, and this woman says, okay, I hear you, but you know what, even dogs can get crabs. What great insight. This woman realized that you know, she, she, had, she had no reason. She, there was absolutely no reason why Jesus could heal this, this little girl. And this woman, the odds were stepped against him. Because what Jesus said, probably it's a metaphor that was known within the region and she knew that, you know, this, I will not, I will not win this argument. But then she decided to turn the tables on Jesus and say, oh, yeah, I know that. But you know, even dogs can get the crumbs from the temple. What great faith. This is the faith that we need in these times. And Jesus had spoken about this. If he only had faith like a mustard seed. And this woman said, I just need the crumbs. Just those crumbs are enough. So again, Jesus is saying to this woman, you are not allowed to have what is for the Jews. And the woman says, I understand that. But because you are God, even those that are outside, those that are far away, that are in the margins, can always get some little food. So friends, while we are here, there are so many things that are coming against us. There are so many things that are stacked against us as a church. As a local mission church in this place, there are so many things that are stacked against us. But we can come in faith. We can overcome the fears. This woman had to overcome the fear. The fear of being a woman, of being someone who was at the margins of society. The fear of being someone who is not even a member of the house of Israel. She had to overcome that, to come to Christ. We also have to overcome so many things that are around us. What is it that we have got to overcome? We have got to overcome the fear of thinking that, you know, God is no longer with us. We have got to overcome that and still believe that when we come to Christ, he will hear us and still believe for our children. When we, when we think that we used to have a big church, when we think that we used to have so many children coming to church, and now we don't see them. We have got to take courage from this woman who decided to go to Christ when the odds were against her. So even now, we can come to Christ. We can come to Jesus with all our petitions, for those of our children, maybe we have left faith. Maybe we have just become so indifferent. For those who are distracted by so many other things, we can come to Jesus and say, Jesus, we've got our children. Remember us. We can come and do that. And Jesus can still say, can still hear us. When we think about mission, we also think that, you know, what can we do now? What can we do now? How can we do mission? So many things are vying for our attention. So many things are happening in the lives of people. And we might think that, you know, 
mission is pride, but you know, this is what I realize now. In, in a world that is so that is so keen to keep people's lives private, even their faith has now become so private. But we can come to Jesus. So when Jesus, when we pray to Jesus, so when we ask Jesus, and then Jesus, he does what he does. And you know what? Jesus did not even see this girl. But the mother realized that in that moment, the girl was released, was released from her infirmity. Because that is how the Spirit of God works. So we also have friends, a community that came with a man to Jesus to say, Jesus, this man is not well. And you know what? It was always the other people. So because this guy could not hear, because he was deaf and he could not speak, he had no idea. But his friends, the community decided that we have heard something. We have heard the good news about a man who can heal. And again, remember Jesus, when he moved from this region where he met this Greek woman, he went to another region called Decapolis, which meant it was a region of ten cities. And again, you must remember that there were gods that were dominant in this area. We know this because at one point again, when Jesus was asking his disciples, who do the people say I am? When you read, he was in this region when, when Peter said, you are the Christ. It was in this region. So it is in this region that this man was brought to him. Again, it is the friends who came to him. So we must never underestimate. We must not underestimate the power that we have as a community to believe for others and to bring others to Christ. When we start to believe for others, what can happen to them is something that will change their lives forever. Like this man, his life was changed forever because the people believed for him and said we should bring him to Christ. So when we think about these invitations, let's pray about it and give out the invitations. Because what can happen to the community that will come is not something that is something that is beyond our imagination of course. Christ will be here. Christ will touch them. Christ will speak to them. So let us come. Let us believe for others. Let us believe for our community to say that this community, this community, this land that John Knox once said, give me Scotland or I die. We can pray for it. We can bring this land. We can bring our community to Christ say, Christ, this is our community. Heal this community. Christ, this is our neighbor. We are bringing you to you. It is you. And you know what? I, I'm not even worried about what will happen to them. Because I only have to believe in Christ. I only have to believe in Christ. Say, Christ, we have given this to you. And he does the rest. Our job is to give out the invitation, believe for our community, believe for our community that this community can be changed because of the fellowship that we can bring, because what Christ can do to our community. Friends, let us, let us have that faith to move us forward, so that if we are going to move forward in this community, We've got to build a trust in Christ. And when we build a trust that is rooted in Christ, what will happen in this community? It will be a river of living water flowing because Christ can do as much. He is that God. He is that God who says, Yes, I want to hear my children bringing their faith to me for those that they love, for those that I 
are being attacked by so many other things. And when Christ says, yes, who can say that? Let us believe. Let us believe for our children. Let us believe for our community. Let us believe for our country. It only needs a few of us to bring others to Christ, to bring others to faith. Let us pray. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. We thank you that you are always ready to hear us. You are always ready to be there for us and hear our prayers. Oh God, we bring before you those in our communities that have been indifferent to faith. Those in our communities that have got questions of our own faith. But we bring them to you knowing that you have the answers to their questions. Help us, O oh God, even as we pray this morning, that when even when we give out our invites for them to come to worship, meet them when they come here, speak to them even before they come here, for we know you can do that. Help us, O oh God, to your faith. Just that little crown will make the difference. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, knowledge. Let's pray together. Almighty Father, we know that we are but sinners. We look for the easy way. We think about ourselves first. We do not always want to walk beside our Lord. But we want, as a church, to be amazed by you. So help us do the simple things. Speak to those who we know so well and are easy with, and say, you're welcome to join us. And then amaze us. <clears throat> amaze us by those who accept and who come and are glad to be in your presence, to worship with us and to serve alongside us, that we may learn to trust you better and follow you more clearly, more, more closely, day upon day. As well as those for whom we are planning to give the invitation, we remember those who worry us. They are mourning. They are unwell. They are struggling with events in their life. We bring them that you might bless them with guidance, with strength and peace. And for those who celebrate, well, we pray that they might be grateful for the God whose hand is open. And as we have given you our offerings this morning, and ask your blessings upon their use, might we ask your blessing on those who do well this week, that they may turn and whisper, Thank you, Father. For time rushes by, and it is time to invite our neighbours here. For this is a mission church, and mission is the way of Jesus. Help us to pray together, knowing that we are in this together. And we are in it with you. And so we pray using the words you taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is. 
it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our final hymn this morning, a reminder that when we stand up, it is for him and with him. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. <laughs>